So here we have a Sound Blaster 2.0 model CT1350B. Today we're going to be installing a CMS upgrade kit on it. Let's get started. A little while ago I picked up this Sound Blaster 2.0 in a lot of other computer parts. Now the card itself works fine and I've actually got plans to use it in another build, but there's one critical thing which makes this card rather unique which I want to utilise. These three unpopulated sockets here actually give it CMS compatibility if populated with the correct chips. Now what CMS is is basically another weird early music standard for video games and it basically sounds really different to the OPL2 which this card has so it's a nice feature to have since you can't really get it on that many Sound Blaster cards without emulation. And this isn't emulating it, this is actually using the real chips in the actual sockets to produce the actual sound, which is really neat. Now, Creative actually did sell a CMS upgrade kit for these cards. It baffles me why they didn't just include the chips on the cards, but oh well. The thing was, they were very rare and hardly anybody did the upgrade. So that means most Sound Blaster 2.0s you'll find will not have the CMS upgrade. A few years ago, it was reverse engineered and discovered that using some program chips, you could actually make your own CMS upgrade. So that's just what somebody did. And I ordered one. Here we have an aftermarket CMS upgrade kit for the Sound Blaster 2.0. I purchased this online and they sold out pretty much straight after, so I'm really glad I managed to get one. But yeah, this basically gives you the three chips to populate the sockets here, so you can give your Sound Blaster 2.0 CMS capabilities. So let's actually start installing this. Um, so if we go ahead and take the tape off of this, and we open up the anti-static bag, and I must say, this is very well packaged. We can see that we get the three chips. So going over the chips quickly, as we can see at the bottom, we have a GAO chip. Now this has apparently been pre-programmed already with what the Sound Blaster needs, so we won't have to do any programming. And then we have the two chips which are actually responsible for producing the sound on this card. And these basically generate a certain wave type, and it sounds really interesting. So yeah, it's a pretty primitive upgrade, but it actually works really well. Now, let's get to actually installing these. As you can see on the chips here, they have little notches in one side. Now that notch is pretty critical because it's actually the orientation in which the chips go. So we need to make sure that they're lined up correctly as so. Now looking on the card here, as you can see the sockets, they actually have a similar notch taken out on that side. So that tells us that all the chips need to go in basically this orientation. So how about we actually start to go ahead and install these chips now. This is rather simple, you just simply take them out of the ESD foam, and I'll do this one at a time here. Now we need to find the card and make sure it goes in the correct orientation. So in this case, it needs to be pointing that way because that's where the end of the thing is. And there we go. Now we've got the programmed GAL chip installed. So that's the first piece of the puzzle completed. We've only got these two little chips left, so we'll do them one at a time here. And we just got to line it up. And we just simply push the chip down into the socket. And there we go. We've got the first chip installed. Now onto the last one. We just take it out of the ESD foam again. Make sure the orientation is correct. Place it into the card. Of course making sure the socket lines up. And then we just quite simply push it in. Okay, so that's the hard part out of the way. We've gotten all the chips installed. That went well. They're really not too hard to do, so yeah. 
There's one last thing we need to do though. As you can see on the card here, there's this little jumper which says CMS off. Now that actually comes um, jumped from the factory because Creative didn't include the CMS upgrade, so they had it off. But since we've installed our CMS upgrade now, we can actually lift this jumper off and just place it off to the side. If we ever decide to uninstall our CMS upgrade, we'll need to change that back. But as long as it's installed, we need to have that jumper off. And there we go. That's literally a sound card upgrade. Done. Right there. So here we go. We've got the upgrade done now. I think it's about time we try this out in a system and actually see how the CMS sounds. So let's do that now. So here we have the Sound Blaster 2 with the CMS upgrade installed, so let's actually get this installed into the system which I'll be using to test out this card. Now I'm going to be using this Pentium 75 build simply because it's the closest thing I have on hand, so yeah. Anyway, if we go ahead and take the lid off. As we can see, I currently have a Sound Blaster OR64 installed, but we're going to need to remove that and replace it with the Sound Blaster 2 here. So if we simply just unscrew the Sound Blaster, which is currently in here, then we can remove it. If we get our Sound Blaster 2, we can simply install it into the same slot. So that works out really nicely. That just goes in there. Then we just need to reinstall the screw. And yeah, there we go. There's our Sound Blaster 2 installed. So let's try it out in some DOS games now. CMS was really obscure, so not a lot of games supported it. But one of the most notable and best sounding ones is probably Monkey Island. So. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like with CMS. Well, this produces a rather unique sound, really. It almost sounds like Game Boy music. The OPL definitely was a big step up from CMS, but this was a big step up from the PC speaker too, so it's really interesting to see this kind of in-between for sound cards. I wouldn't necessarily like to play Monkey Island with CMS rather than OPL, but still, it's a really nice thing to have the compatibility. Now that's the other thing, CMS, it's hardly supported by any games, so Monkey Island's the only one I'll be demonstrating today. But yeah, it's still nice to be able to hear the difference. Well that's about it for today's video, we performed a CMS upgrade on this Sound Blaster 2.0, then tried out some Monkey Island. Overall, the CMS is really interesting, though I'm glad it's been left in the past. That's about it from me, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.